Hello, Hello once again, YouTube. <laughs> Hello once again, YouTube, and welcome back to the domain. Another hot takes video. Uh, this is <laughs> a pretty funny one. We are filming this in an empty room. I am about to take a flight to England in about three hours. But we watched the last two episodes of the Halo TV series last night, and we, we just have to say our piece, right? I think mostly good, and to be honest, if you've been struggling with this show uh, mentally, you can't really decide what parts to like, what side of the fence you want to be on. I really hope that you can watch this whole episode, and my uh, goal here is to try and convert you to the other side. Brainwash you to agree We're gonna brainwash you. No, because legitimately, we've waited like nine years for this TV show, and I think we all owe it to ourselves to give it a good service, to at least give it a chance, because it is arguably, I, mean, I don't think anyone can argue that it's getting better. If we give it a good shot, we can open Paramount up to the possibility of way more TV series, way more anime, way more things set in the Halo universe. The last thing we want as Halo fans is for this to bomb. Yeah, I mean, if the entire Halo community is just shreds this show, like why would anyone touch it? No one will, no one will. So, someone has clearly put in budget too. Like, massive budget, budget massive like, budget. You watch that, like it's it's so sweet. Like visually, take away any discussion of like canonical, yeah. non canonical, take yeah. away all those other things and just say, wow, did they actually care to put time and money into this? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah they yes. did. So pointing out problems is not a problem. You gotta give positivity when there's room for positivity, right. like 100%. Feedback is good. Complimenting the story and the narrative at, at the moment, I think, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna go through every point that we want to talk about. There will be some negativity, there will be some criticism, but mostly, spoilers, this is gonna be a pretty positive review. Spoilers, Kel and Simon are positive? I've never heard of that before. This contains spoilers for episode one, two, and three. You have been warned, and we do recommend you watch them before you see this video. So this is the Domain's hot take for the Halo TV series, episode one to three. Hope you all enjoy. There's only one way to really begin this, and that's the opening scene. What? I thought it was phenomenal, like honestly. I know <laughs> that some people might have slight grievances towards the CGI, possibly. There were a little, a couple of little janky parts. I was struggling to find what was CGI and what was realistic prop. Like there were some really good moments. You're putting aliens onto screen. Like, mm. it's not gonna be perfect, right? Yeah. But try, like anyone who tries to tell me that that opening like combat scene wasn't epic, it was know. so epic. I don't know what you're talking it was so about. Epic. And like, it's a pilot. You... It's a pilot for a TV show. Literally. <laughs> right. They were like, yeah, we're going to open it up. Also, it's going to be like way more violent than anyone expected. Way more violent. Like, we were like, oh my way goodness. I mean, this show has like lost They killed, limbs. literally the first person who dies is like the teenage kid that gets blown, blown up. up. It like, just explodes and, and I immediately look at Simon and we're like, no. They kill uh, children in the show. Yeah. They have full frontal nudity. Like there was a full frontal. Oh, 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 oh back, back, <laughs> full backward, full, <laughs> full back, backle noodle <laughs> nudity. They have some. They have some butt cheeks in the show. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> There's cheeks. We saw chief cheeks. Oh, chief cheeks. Yeah, chief I, cheeks. I, 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 we'll get to that. Chief cheeks. The opening scene. Will we get to that? Was pretty great. Uh, they built tension very well. I know another criticism of this show so far is that it's mainly just elites. But think about how you play Halo. When you first start playing Halo Infinite, or really any title, you show you, you show down against like a few enemies and gradually like the Grunt Mule and the Sentinels and the Harbinger and the Skimmers are like all introduced slowly. Like that's how you tell a good story. Start with the elites because they're the most iconic Halo enemy. And then you gradually bring in, you have one prophet, then you have all three, then you have the like Golo Worms. And, and I feel like the the story they're trying to tell in this show is right, right they're trying to chase down the artifact. Right. And obviously it makes sense that if you're gonna go do that, they would use like a special forces team or yes. like like literally like a collection team, small elite force. Mm. You don't need any grunts to go in and like do that. Right. I just, it, it makes sense to me that that's what they would do. Yeah. Again, this is coming from 
not Halo Cal. I do wonder why they attacked the village anyway, because the dig site was like miles away. Literally. Yeah, I think if, if, even if not miles, like they they it showed they were doing they've it. They've been there. Yeah, yeah. They what didn't actually the need to attack that village. And yeah. if they did attack that village, why didn't they just go ahead and glass the planet? He essentially found it. I mean, the chief walked in and just saw it on the wall. So like, were the Covenant just studying it? And if the Covenant was studying it, why make themselves known at all to the UNSC? Like any show, there's going to be questions on yeah. the necessity and reason for the actions of characters. Right, same as any video game, any TV series, yeah. Yeah, how many times, we're, like literally how many times have we played like any sort, insert Mission of Halo here and we're like, well, would they do that? Yeah, it's like, like, it's okay. Like, what? can't the Harbinger just come in and just snap the Chief's neck instantly? Why is uh, the Blade Master like studying and following the Chief but not just killing him? There's a lot of questions, for sure. There are a lot of points in this show where, yeah, you could overanalyze it, you could like, really pick it apart and scene by scene think, okay, that's maybe not how it would have sequenced. At the same time, they packed a lot into that first episode. They pack a lot into every episode. I feel like I'm yeah, watching a movie each time. For real. Not to mention the long, long, long commercial breaks. The commercial breaks are pretty horrific. Simon here, Mr. BBC, BBC Television, BBC, no ads. No commercials. BBC Radio, no ads. So that makes me, every time you say that, I'm like, when you and your sibling were watching cartoons, like, what did you guys get up and like run and fight to like who could use the bathroom in that 90 seconds? True, I don't know. that was like, me and my brother was like, hey, it's like coming on, it's coming on. But also like, some of our on. cartoons were longer because there were no ads and they needed to run for half an hour. So opening scene was absolute carnage. I love the use of all of the classic weapons from Halo, particularly the plasma pistol just blowing the elite's face off. I know a lot of people are complaining about the lack of like authentic sound effects from the Halo universe in this show. Mm. I think that might come with time. You've got to remember this is for a broader audience, and that's probably what we'll swing back around to a lot. I know that diehard Halo fans have waited for this show for many years, and they expect this show to just be made for them. Let's be absolutely real with this one. This is on Paramount+, Plus. it's got an enormous budget, and to get an enormous budget, it has to be for a larger audience. A lot of the time, TV shows and creators will sublease projects to other like developers because they don't have the resources on site. The Halo Outpost Discovery Experience was a external company running that convention. It's very hard to get the money for these kind of things. That's why Halo Nightfall was so closed off. Same as Halo Forward Unto Dawn. Small, closed off sets, minimal budget, minimal actors, because you can't really afford it. If you're gonna put a show forward on Paramount Plus, and it's gonna be marketed as the next big show, you have to make it for a broader audience. That means maybe more realistic sound effects than we have in like the cartoony elements in Halo. Halo. Maybe that means more realistic grounded music. Though I do appreciate that the trailers for this TV show use original Halo soundtrack. And I think those kind of points are things that we can start to progressively change. This show has already been signed on for season two. We could make petitions saying, hey, we want more realistic Halo sound effects and music. That's a pretty minimal ask, I think. Even my uh, my stepdad like hit me up and was like, hey, like, are you watching this Halo show? Like, and immediately he's like, what does Simon think? That's amazing. Yeah, but he, he was like, he was like, it's awesome. You know, he's like, he thinks it's really, really He asked if good. I was part of the TV show. That was my mom. My mom was <laughs> like, mom. is Simon involved in that? Like, <laughs> Not yet, mom. <laughs> I think it makes it way more different when you watch it from, you know, a long-term Halo fan versus yes. someone who's new to it. And that's why we have a good dynamic here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally think so. As someone coming from not being from the Halo community, like, yeah. it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. And it's gonna draw people in. And again, like, it's it's how you get more content. You gotta be careful to, like, not gatekeep things you love, right? Yeah. It's sure. very easy to, though. Yeah, it's yeah, very, very easy, easy to, to, right? Especially when you've been committed to something for so long. Like, I can get yeah. it, you know what I mean? You even see gatekeeping when Halo makes a new video game. Everybody wants the original weapons, mm -hmm. the original sounds, the original art style, and some things have to change over time. Good for us, in my opinion, that 343 at least listen. Not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> no, but uh, we can talk about that for a long cool, time. Cool, so, okay, let's let's move on. How about Chief touching the artifact? Yeah, and one of the main ways that the Halo TV show is changing versus canon is things like uh, the human's relationship with the Forerunners. So they confirm the Forerunners were 100,000 years ago, that's when the artifact was. When Chief touches it, he's clearly a special chosen one. And when the Arbiter finds the girl in the rubble, she's a chosen one. Also, perfect way 
of making that girl convert to the Covenant. Yes. Like, having her on yes. a mining, was like a plastic... a tier two garbage collection mm -hmm. outer rim system? And that's real. Something that's wild. real. Like, that's real. It made it so clear, yeah. Like, literally, yeah. like, here's here's a minute-long clip to show you why Ma Mackie? Ma Mackie. 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 The crazy thing is, like, how can, how can I call her bad, though? That's the no. best part. Not really the Covenant, because, like, the Covenant wants to destroy everything, so there's not very redeeming factors. Right. All sides of the story. Yeah, there's gonna and be, that's like, what we want. different... Like, there's gonna be dimensions in depth in like layers of like conflict and it's gonna be a little unclear like who's good who's bad like Halsey Halsey to me villainized right yeah, no, no, like sure. how can you watch that character and you're like is she good is she bad it's like she's it's like means to an event and she's like total like Machiavelli, like yeah. totally like Machiavellian it's just like means to an end she's like oh like I'm gonna I'm gonna break the rules Right? I'm gonna like do this morally wrong thing mm -hmm. that's illegal. Lie to Chief, being like, oh, it's just there to help you. In reality, thing. it's to like kill Chief's brain pretty much and control everything. Halsey trying to take total control of Chief. So, like, she's yeah. not a good person, but she wants the good end, which is winning the war. humanity. But you can but also tell. So that Machiavellian, right? You can also tell that she, she, she believes in her own research, I think, above saving humanity. And that's actually the same in the video game. Halsey is branded a war criminal straight after Halo 3 once the actual documents come out about the Spartan program and once the UNSC are like, okay, you kidnapped and tortured children and most of them died. You're gonna go to jail for life even though you saved humanity and that's the reality of politics, right? Now, in Halo canon, there's the term reclaimer, which is like who takes the mantle of responsibility, who can now govern the galaxy after the Forerunners. And Chief is referred to as the reclaimer by actual Forerunners. I haven't read all the books. I'm trying to work my way through as best I can because there are so many and some of them are so massive. Like this is a uh, video format to old canon, even though it might not follow the, the book and the video game canon. Halo has always had this kind of problem. The campaigns are only like, eight to nine, 10 missions long, and the books fill out all the lore in between. So to like really understand what happens with the Spartan program, with Halsey, with Chief's upbringing, you have to read the books. That's not a bad thing per se, like it is cool to get expanded lore, but this TV show is like shrinking all of that extended lore from video games, comic books, other TV and film and, uh, and books. Did I say books twice? Yeah. I might have said books twice. All into this one TV show. And that's what I gotta respect about it. Yes, it's gonna become very difficult down the line to determine what happened in the silver timeline and what happened in the blue timeline or blue team timeline. That will be difficult. And again, we're gonna come back to this constantly. Should the Halo TV series be canon? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Like, here's the thing. We're looking at Planet Reach right now. We might see the Battle of Reach in live action. Season two, right? Probably. Like, end of, tell me, like. End of season one. End of season one. End of season one is finding the ring and it's going to be Attack on Reach. Oh, maybe the season finale is the Attack on Reach and then they, they find the ring. In Halo Combat Evolved in the first game, Chief is fleeing from Reach, emergency slip space jump and finds the ring. Uh, Combat Evolved. So he leaves Reach and finds the ring. As they're attacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But So as Reach is pretty much destroyed. It's just going to be so interesting to me to see uh, the convergent timelines. And I'm actually all for it. And here's the thing. You would never get the budget to make a Fall of Reach like live action TV series because it would just be so closed off and again gatekeeped if you made it canon. Every single decision is, is a problem. When Halo Combat Evolved came out, there was a book, Halo The Fall of Reach, and that was what happened to Reach before Combat Evolved. But then Halo Reach, the video game came out, and it was a different telling of events in a different timeline. Mm -hmm. And people have argued about that for like 10 years. Constantly, people are arguing about which is the better timeline. When Halo Reach, the video game came out, people hated the fact that it retconned a lot of the stuff in the book. So it's like, what are you gonna do? Like, what are you gonna do? You have to make it non-canon. Should you care? Should you care? I don't know. Kind of yes, kind of no. I understand that people, this is, you know, Halo is a lot of people's lives, including mine, and we've been with this franchise for 20 years. 
So to see a different sequence of events is a little jarring. The fact that we get a flood teaser in episode three. Chief touches the artifact, he has memories. I don't think it the artifact like necessarily brought anything to life. I think it just made his memories flash and everybody found out that he's a reclaimer, right? Mm -hmm. Him and uh, Quan. Or it shows- oh, No, not Quan. What's it? Mackie. Mackie, Mackie. Then the insurrectionists have a bit of a moment with the UNSC. I love the fact that they team up with the Spartans to fight the Covenant, episode one. Honestly, like, it's the, it's, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Right. Like, Aside from the books. It's obvious. It's uh, obvious. And that is what happened with the books. The UNSC and the insurrectionists had to team up to fight the Covenant. I don't know exactly what happens in every single book. I like to call them freedom fighters. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they all fight against the UNSC and then- For freedom! And then they're given an even better reason to fight against the UNSC when, uh, Unche? Unche? Vincher. Vincher? Is that a V? <laughs> Man, I was right in fact. <laughs> Vincher teams up uh, with the UNSC to Also, the classic villain character. Classic villain character. That guy That is... guy plays every villain. In the books, it's kind of just brushed over. Yeah, the humans were fighting the insurrectionists, and yeah, the Spartans were made to fight the insurrectionists as a reason to have the Spartans already aged to a point that they can fight by the time the Covenant invade. But it's brushed over, and you never see it in any video games. That's always been a bit of a shame. Hot take. The internal politics of the UNSC is incredible in great television. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want, like, honestly, who doesn't want to know about the military complex while, like, a genocidal species is just wiping out all their planets? So you've never been a part of an organization, then, I see. Like, you right, steady, never, steady on, but... <laughs> well, like, seriously, like, I know, I know. But, like, seriously, like, I've never been a part of a, like, an organization... That doesn't have internal That doesn't have internal politics. Yeah, like, that is, that is human nature. That is the nature of the beast. Yeah. And you're talking yeah. about an organization that is quite literally a military foundation, like, to fight a genocidal yeah. group of aliens. Yeah. So, I think it's awesome. I think it's super cool to see, like, the bounce off of each other, especially when Halsey just absolutely, absolutely puts it on the table with, um... Karnowski? Yes, I was like, starts with a P. Hood supports her and bails her out when she gets asked about, right. like, the illegal cloning and stuff. Well, so. Hood's the head of the military, so right. it's just like, he needs... War machines, he needs his Spartans, like 100%. Yeah. It's fascinating, and it, I think that's realistic. And then what are they gonna do when the Flood invades? Or when they actually find the Halo? Or when they wanna use the Halo's technology to expand, like, across the galaxy? There's so many topics that, like, need discussing mm -hmm. here. Maybe people have an issue with the UNSC being portrayed, like, truly as a colonizer. Like, right, yeah. But look, I, they, I, are, like, they are. They are! Colonizers. It's yeah, just, it's yeah. part of it. I mean, colonizers. like, if you compare this to like like a Star Wars, for yeah, example. Right. Like the UNSC is not that far off from being the Empire. Look at yeah. that garbage planet, right? Yeah. Like literally like using people as yeah. physical labor slaves to clean garbage. Yeah. And that's I, what they're doing. Yeah, and I know And the, taking the resources of another yeah. planet like, to pull out hydrogen mm -hmm. from um Madrigal. Madrigal. So like Yeah, and I, I love understand it. it. I understand it. Some people would say that doesn't belong in Star Wars, and I understand mm -hmm. that more because Star Wars has so many themes and it's also been going for six movies. Yeah. So if you start yeah, to introduce different. new elements in the sequel trilogy, especially under a new umbrella of Disney, you can be criticized, I think quite fairly, for things that maybe fans don't like. Yeah. But Halo has never had this kind of adaptation. We've had very small closed off stories with Forward Unto Dawn and Nightfall. You gotta f set the foundations and when you set it at the start of the Covenant War, you have to talk about politics. Yeah. If you did a TV show that was set in like, Halo 5 era, which was originally my argument. I was like, if you're gonna do it canon, do it around between maybe Halo 4 and 5 or between 5 and Infinite, something that we've not really explored. But then you're still bound by the constricts of the timeline and the lore and everything else. So I get that, you know, I understand that maybe there is a time and a place for different themes, but we're setting the foundations for a new TV show. Whereas this is much more complicated. Much more complicated. Because you're viewing Master Chief as the primary good guy, mm -hmm. right? Well, the primary good guy does not feel. He's a cold killer, yeah. literally. Which they even explore in Halo Infinite quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so it's it's um, it's um just different. It is it's just different. different. Like, it's just different. Um, there has been a long, long, long-standing debate in the Halo community. Probably the most debated topic of all time. Should the Master Chief be humanized? I go for both. 
I say in Halo 1 to 3, there was so much going on. Uh, all I needed from Chief was that he had a relationship with Cortana, and that was really all I wanted. When you go past that, and you have Chief stranded on Requiem, and then you have Cortana going AWOL, you have to explore his humanity. I know they're showing his face even more than his helmet a right lot. now. A lot. A lot more than his helmet. A lot. That, that's yeah. a strange decision. That is a strange decision. I was expecting to see his face, but I didn't realize like it's, it's mostly it's his just face. With, it's just his face, and uh, bare butt cheeks and all. Um, chief cheeks. Chief cheeks. Get them chief cheeks. Chief cheeks. Chief. <laughs> you can do that. Yeah, chief cheeks. Peachy chief cheeks. Pe pe peachy chief cheeks. Chief peachy chief cheeks. That's cheeks. That's good, dude. If you're making a Halo TV series, it has to be a chief story. Like it has to be because There's he's, no he's the only marketable character, really. Like realistically, the only marketable character. If you mention Halo to any random NPC civilian, <laughs> if you mention Halo, I really like the idea of calling non-Halo fans NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> if you mention Halo to any non-Halo fan, they might be able to say the Master Chief's name. I think maybe 8 out of 10 people our age, if they don't play Halo, they at least know what the Master Chief looks like. We've explained that really you have to do it non-canon. If we did a canonical TV show that lasted like 10 seasons and had like world-ending cataclysmic events, it would step on all the other core lore so badly. It would never work. Okay, so there's one relationship that I, I really like. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really interested to see how it continues to grow. Do you know what that relationship is? Do you know what I'm gonna say? Is it gonna be uh, Quan Ha and Soren? I was gonna say Soren in general and Soren's yeah. relationship with Chief. Soren's fantastic. But also his with Quan Ha and like what that's gonna look like because they just went off on their own mission, right? Like they're going back to Madrigal. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that, I don't know if the plot was like that um, generous with like Soren's motivations there. Like, yeah, she could give him some money, but also he promised Chief to keep her safe. And then he's like, all right, go on, then we'll go to Madrigal. When McKee invades the uh, frigate, amazing. But they should have just shot her. Like, yeah. they didn't shoot at her once. Even like the captain like, just like stares at her for a bit and he's just like. First of all, the UNSC should have had like that absolute god. She says, oh, the Covenant jettisoned in drop pods, but that she was in slip space? So they can't jettison from drop pods in slip space, so how did she get it into slip space? Her excuse makes no sense there, so I would have the military ready to fire. If anything goes wrong, shoot the girl first. You know what I mean? The second there's a problem, I guess it was an introduction to showing her strength, but the fact that yeah, she says she's that's, gonna- That's strictly what it was. But she's gonna bring it. the demon's head to the prophets, but she has no powers. Also, the prophets and high charity, probably my favorite part. I mean- Just gorgeous. Yeah. Talking about politics again, yes, it does make total sense that there would be trash worlds because humans are incredibly wasteful and they will never stop being wasteful. Then the Arbiter, takes her as a prisoner and she's raised by the prophets. I wouldn't the, even say as a prisoner, he no. saves her. He saves her. Truly. And the fact that the prophets raise her, cause like some people would be like, oh, she shouldn't be on the high council with these prophets. But like, yeah, kind of, maybe she should. Like she's literally a chosen one to touch the artifact. She believes in the religion. Like maybe if I was the prophets, I would give her a little less control. But all she needs to do is touch the, but then again, you don't know how far she has to go. They, she might have to interface the with thing, everything. The thing is, they require right. her to be a part of it. So like- Truth, mercy, and regret. They look incredible. They do. Like, and the fact that they talk in an alien language as well is great. And credit to the actress for Maki. She does that accent, like that, that uh, alien dialect, perfectly. I really like the dynamic of like showing the history of like Soren and John. I didn't like that he went AWOL episode one. Um, I thought that was too much at the end. I think that should have been like episode three or four. But when you look at the pace of this show, there's no room it for moves that. Yeah. What I really appreciate is that the Master Chief actually like realized the importance of the mission and went straight home. He was like, you know what? This is way too important. I'm going to get this artifact to the UNSC. Like, it was like, I, cuff me, go I, ahead. Yeah, I betrayed them to save this girl, but this is way beyond any of us. So yeah, I need my Spartans. I need Silver Team. Let's get home. Integrating artificial intelligence to take over his mind is not uh, Halo canon. All right, so let's talk about the Chief and Cortana's relationship here, because that's like a funny one as well. Yeah, it's an interesting relationship, especially yeah. pretty much the goal is like for Master Chief as a person to be dead, but with all the physical attributes now handed over to Cortana. Right? Kind of. Yeah. Which is really messed up and creates a lot of layers. It's now a dynamic between Halsey, Cortana, and Master Chief. It's pretty wild. Like It's a great string, and the fact that they've yeah. also established that Cortana only has partial control over Chief right now is really great. I like that they showed that Cortana can't access the artifact 
in the body of chief. Like he has to be like mm. in control. Huge. Yeah. That it shows actually, you like, well, yeah. why wouldn't they just take control? I also kind of really appreciate that Chief is not on board with Cortana at first. I know that's another big criticism that's rolling around online right now. And really? Yeah. And it makes sense that he would be. Yeah, we've never seen that. Only in Halo Infinite. Only now we saw like a flashback of when Halsey first gives Chief Cortana. Chief doesn't say anything. It's not implied that he's in love with her immediately. In this canon, it does make sense to me that he would be a little reluctant at first. The fact that Cortana is able to communicate with both Halsey and Chief simultaneously. Yeah, and that is, is the case wild. in the video games and the, the whole UNSC. Like. During the Battle of Earth, Cortana's on the data net. Like she's contacting in all different platoons and giving them directions like she's coordinating the battle pacing can be rough at times like also there's so much to fill in it's nine episodes halo one to three you could argue that chief was lucky but halo infinite yeah he's the chosen one he floats in space for six months wakes up and in one day pretty much takes down the entire pretty banished infrastructure lucky. yeah like pretty, all the main leaders pretty, like pretty lucky. Bum, bum, be dum, bum, bum, be dum. So, Mr. Kellen, I think we're about wrapping up everything we wanted to say about each individual character and plotline. I am- Quan Ha, we didn't talk about her, but she's great. I'm really excited to see how she develops. Yeah, um, I think she's too young to be uh, trying to fight this war right now. I also think Miranda Key's casting was way, way too young. Every true hero must rise above before they're ready. Jacob Key's casting was really awesome. I think everyone- Oh, Lord Hood, amazing. Like, I think everyone was actually- pretty uh, realistic to their characters in Halo. Chief's character in the Halo TV series, Hot Take, I believe that is the same Chief from the video games, but he found an artifact and remembered his childhood. The Chief goes AWOL in Halo 5. He's shown to be very remorseful towards Cortana with a lot of regret, a lot of real, uh, real empathy. I think if he had touched an artifact and regained some memories, I think it could be a different story in the video games. Cortana is actually a bit- She's blue. A bit jar- uh, she is blue, which works. Yeah, and it is a bit jarring seeing Were her like- Were people concerned that she wasn't gonna be blue? She wasn't, and they've- they've added more blue. They listen. Feedback. Feedback, but also- Constructive. Being reasonable. Be reasonable, man. Do you want to, do you want to cancel? Audience. Like, do you want it to no. be canceled, no. or do you want it to like get better? You you decide. You need it to get better. Like, like this is our last chance. This is our one shot, and it needs to be a Master Chief story, and it needs to be non-canonical. You get enough bad feedback, or, or like enough people just hate, like tr people who call themselves fans, yeah. like hating on Infinite because of multiplayer issues, and hating on the show because of. It's non-canonical. Yeah. Okay, so you just want Halo to drop out of ever being created or giving like that's literally what's gonna happen. Like that's that's what happens if you literally trash the two yeah. biggest attempts that have ever been made right. to please right. your interest in this thing, right. and you just shred it completely. Right. That's I a bit harsh. But I like, empathize truly, for like, everyone. Like I I I've had a up and down relationship with Halo Infinite's multiplayer. Like I get it. I'm a huge Halo fan. I've had this YouTube channel for 10 years. I want the best for Halo. And the best for Halo is reaching a more mainstream audience. We're not here today to talk about the success of Halo Infinite. But again, you <laughs> hate on the video game and then the staff are just displeased. They'll quit. There'll be a reshuffle and that'll delay more and more and more. Mm -hmm. If you enjoy the core gameplay, just praise it and we'll get more. And Literally I... yesterday we got Flood Firefight in Halo 3 ODST. Certainly people can say that the golden days were Halo 2 and 3 and I'm never gonna question that. I'm sure it was the best time on Earth. I'm getting to the age where I'm like, I want to see that Halo has a longevity to it. And this is the way forward. This is the chance. Supporting a core Halo TV show that is not canon because if it isn't canon then we can explore all these incredible events like the Fall of Reach without the worry of it messing with the core canon. We can explore new Spartans that don't get wiped out after Halo 3 where there's only like a half a dozen Spartans left in existence. The Forerunners returning and the Didact and the Flood, we can do so much. But what's the point of watching a TV show when you know exactly what the plot is and how it's gonna operate and you, anytime you see a problem, you're like, well, that's not exactly how it went down in the video games. It's, it's a shame. And at least with Silver Timeline, of course, all the time we're going to be saying, well, that wasn't in the video games. But at least now it's like, well, it's not canon anyway. I think it's brilliant. I think the fact that they made it non-canon, and we keep coming back to this, is absolutely the correct start of getting yeah, ahead it. Yeah, it has to be. The original question that we were asking ourselves today, should the Halo TV series be canon and should we care? 
No. No. I don't think so. And I'm not trying to undermine anyone that has a personal struggle here. I know that Halo means different things to everybody. So by no means are we trying to tread on anyone or undermine anyone's feelings because there is legitimate concern and legitimate reasons that you could hate on this TV show. And there are a lot of things that I don't want to go into that are negatives coming from this TV show. But overall, I see the bigger picture. I see Halo's longevity because that's what I care about. So that about does it for this hot take. I hope you enjoyed yourself. This is the first time we've ever done a full pledged video on the green screen. I don't even know if this green screen works properly. So I mean, let's just see what, what, what garbage this renders up. I don't know. Shout out to Kellen. Thank you very much for tuning in today. I hope you all stay awesome and you stay safe. And I hope that even if you disagreed with everything we said here, you can take something away that will let you approach this TV show with a better mindset. Because that's remember, what I want. Positive feedback. Let's keep the feedback going, but let's also, when you see something positive, go and call tell. It out. Yeah, go and call it out on Twitter. Go and call out every moment that you enjoy. And then talk about what could be approved. Upon. We'll get more. And if Paramount Plus sees that money is coming in for this TV show, they'll go to 343 and they'll say, what's next? What else can we make? It'll be a Disney situation where suddenly we get things like Disney Visions and Disney Landscapes or whatever that, the biomes, Disney biomes. Like, no. we'll get fun stuff that we would have never thought of. Maybe even Halo Legends Series 2. Go out there, support your local TV show, <laughs> and vote for Halo. <laughs> this was The Domain, signing okay. off. And, and Cal, signing off. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's do it.